Welcome back to our next episode on CATD of UNEB Solutions. We are looking at UNEB UCE 2024 Biology Theory, paper 553, stroke 1. And we had covered the other items, so we are continuing in section B, part 2, which also has two items item 5, actually, has item 6 and item 7. This part comes from element of construct theory, which simply says the learner understands how animals obtain and use nutrients to meet their requirements, during which raw materials and products are transported to and from various organs involved. And you will find that this element of construct is covering topics like nutrition in animals, nutrition in animals, we have transporting animals, aerobic and anaerobic respiration, we have cell specialization, and lastly, excretion. So the item which is coming, the two items coming from this element of construct, they have to fall under those topics given there. There are around five topics. And our unit item, item six, which is simply saying, John, whose mother has hepatitis B, was involved in a motor accident. He hit his head, lost a lot of blood, and became unconscious. He was rushed to the nearby health center for where they found that he, has, he is of blood group AB and also had injured his kidneys. The doctor advised that, they, that John should undergo blood transfusion in addition to other medication. The health center did not have blood, but John's relative with safe blood were willing to donate blood to save his life. However, they were confused as who of them could donate blood. And we have a table which shows blood groups of John's available relatives. You find that the cousin is of blood group A, the mother of blood group B, the sister, blood group AB, and then the brother is of blood group O. Being given that table, they're asking you under the task part, explain how the accident affected the functioning of John's body. And part B, without referring to John to another hospital, suggest with reasons which relative or relatives could donate blood to John. Under that item, first of all, they are telling that this guy, John, was involved in an, in an accident and he hit his head, which led him to losing a lot of blood. That's one thing you, you've been given. The first thing, he hit his head in the accident. And on hitting his head, he lost a lot of blood, which made him to become unconscious. You also find that as he was taken to the hospital, he needed a blood transfusion. And our task part, which is saying, part A, explain the, how the accident affected John's functioning of, affected functioning of John's body. How did the accident affect functioning of his body? You have to check during the accident what transpired in the accident. One thing they told you, he hit his head. And we all know hitting the head has certain consequences on the body. And on hitting the head, he also lost a lot of blood. So you have to check on the things he faced that could have led, led to his unconsciousness. And one of them, we had severe loss of blood, which reduced supply of oxygen and glucose to join easy brain cells that disrupted various nervous coordination causing unconsciousness. In this case, we all know blood is always transporting oxygen and other nutrients to your brain cells. And once you hit the head and you lose a lot of blood, probably you could have lost that much blood via a certain opening from the head. Probably the injury that you got on the head. And in losing that much blood from the body, we all understand that blood is always important in transporting oxygen and nutrients to the body organs. And one of the vital body organs we have is the brain. Once the brain is no longer receiving enough glucose and oxygen, one will have challenges like getting unconsciousness. And we also have losing that much blood from the body. This person is losing a lot of blood from the body. It's going to have an impact on the blood pressure. Because remember that the blood volume will decrease and you will find that the blood pressure will also drop, and this could result into organ failure. We have vital organs in the body which could get damaged, which could just 
fail to carry out their roles. And one of the organs, we have the brain. Apart from the brain, even the heart could be affected due to that excessive loss of blood. So you find that decrease in blood volume led to a drop in blood pressure, which could result in organ failure of vital organs like the brain affecting nervous coordination of vital activities in the body. And then the other thing, we have hitting the head could have caused internal bleeding. You're hitting the head, maybe even if you may not have an injury physically, but hitting that head could cause internal bleeding. There are certain delicate body cells inside there, which could be damaged. And once there is any rupture of a, a blood vessel inside there, much as the blood may not flow to the outside, we could have internal bleeding, and this internal bleeding could affect his normal functioning of the cells. Let's move to our task. Part essays explain how the accident affected functioning of the human body. We all know that in the accident, he had an issue of hitting the head and losing a lot of blood. So one of the challenges he faced that affected functioning of his body, he has severe loss of blood. Severe loss of blood from the body tends to reduce supply of oxygen and glucose to the brain cells. And once you reduce supply of oxygen and glucose to the brain cells, we tend to affect nervous coordination. Nervous coordination may not flow properly. And in that case, this person goes unconscious. The other thing, hitting the head could have led to internal bleeding affecting consciousness. This person hit the head, we could suspect an issue of internal bleeding inside the, inside the head, and this could affect the consciousness. Because once there is internal bleeding in the head, it tends to affect the brain. We have the other thing, injury to the kidneys. You are told that during a, what one of the things he got from the accident was injuring his kidneys. And we all know kidneys are important in filtration of blood. So injuring the kidneys led to reduced filtration, leading to accumulation of toxins in the body. Once there is no proper filtration of blood, you'll find that toxins tend to accumulate in the body. And that's one another problem we also faced. Then the other thing, excessive loss of blood and kidney damage weaken the immune system. How is that coming up? This person is losing a lot of blood, and we all know blood is important in immunity. That blood consists of, we have the blood platelets, we have the, some of the white blood cells are in that blood. And once you lose much of it, you're even losing those defensive components from blood. And therefore, you don't have an issue of weakening the body immunity. The other thing, with the damage of the kidneys, you're lowering the rate at which these kidneys are filtering blood, removing toxins. So with accumulation of toxins in your body, that one also affect some of the organs, weakening the immunity of this person. That's all we had to cover in part A. You have to look at each, each issue they gave you that happened in the accident. In the accident, they told this person hit the head, you talk about that. The person lost a lot of blood, you talk about that. The person got damage in the kidneys. You talk about damage, how damage in the kidneys affects the body, how loss of blood from the body affects it, and how hitting the body could result into unconsciousness. That's all we could cover on party A. And now party B, they are saying without referring John to another hospital, suggest with reasons which relatives could donate blood to John. In blood transfusion, there is something you have to know. Before you transfuse, transfuse blood to someone, first of all, your blood must be compatible. How do you check compatibility? You check the blood groups, checking a given table, which is always available in the hospital before they donate blood. You first check for compatibility of that blood. And even before we give that blood, which you're saying is compatible with the other person, you have to check for infections. That blood has to first be screened to ensure that there are no infections that are transmittable to the other person. So we have the members who are willing to transfuse blood, to donate blood to John. We have the mother, but they say the mother has hepatitis B. So the mother will already be removed. Why? She has hepatitis B in her blood, which can be transmitted to John during the transfusion. So that one is already cancelled out. She will, not trans, she will not donate blood to John. Then the other thing, we come and check. Before you donate blood, you first have to know the blood group of the recipient. John is our recipient in this case, the person going to receive blood. And John is of blood group AB. Blood group AB has antigens A and antigen B. However, it lacks 
antibodies. It lacks antibodies A, B. It lacks antibodies A and D. Antibody B in the blood plasma. So this makes John a universal recipient. John is capable of receiving blood from all bloody groups. Now let's check which of these blood groups will be capable of donating to blood with the valid reason. We have Johnny's brother. Johnny's brother is of blood group O. We all understand that blood group O is a universal donor. Why? That blood group lacks antigens A and B. And in that case, that person is able to donate blood to any blood group without any complication. So Johnny's brother will be a good choice. Also, we have the sister and the cousin can donate blood to John since his blood plasma has no ant antibodies against antigens A and B. You find that the sister is of blood group AB. Blood group AB is compatible with blood group AB of the recipient. So the sister is capable of donating blood today to John. And the cousin, the cousin is of blood group A, which has anti antigen A and antibody B. This blood group is capable of donating blood to John. Given that John's blood group lacks antibodies in his blood plasma against antigens A and antigen B. You find that the, the cousin having blood group A has antigen Z A. However, in the blood of John, there are no antibodies against DC antigen. So that person is also compatible. Is also capable of giving blood to John. And then lastly, we have much as the mother has a blood type that is compatible to that of John. You find that the mother is of blood group B. This blood group B can also donate to John. But the problem in this case is the mother has hepatitis B and she cannot donate blood to John due to that transmittable infection that is, can move to the next person during the, the blood transfusion. So the only candidates will simply be, the only candidates we shall have, John's brother, John's sister, and a cousin.